I'll I'll go ahead and um, see. I'll go ahead and advance the slides for you as we. Oh, play. awesome! Cool. Okay, so I just came today, I guess, to give you guys kind of a little overview of what I do as a nurse. I know there's so many different things that you can do as the nurse. There's like endless possibilities and opportunities. Um, I've done floor nursing and done bedside nursing, but unfortunately I had a back injury. So I went ahead and looked into something where I could actually do like more of an office setting and not so much lifting, turning, pushing, pulling. So I went into case management and nursing. <clears throat> um, most recently, my role is uh, working in the hospital setting as an inpatient case manager, um, which a lot of people probably don't even know exists in the hospital. But um, as soon as somebody is admitted to the hospital, um, the case manager um, gets a list, which is called the census every day. And we know who's in the hospital for what and who what doctor's seen them. Um, we look at everything that's going on, all the diagnosis. We have to do what's called um, daily reviews and make sure that there's they have a diagnosis that meets what's called the guideline to be in the hospital because insurance companies are very strict with, um, should you be in the hospital setting because it's very expensive or should you be discharged and released and maybe to like home health or something like that. So my job is to make sure that all that those criteria are met and that you're in and discharged on time, which what we call a goal length of stay. Every diagnosis has a goal length of stay. So if it's going longer than it should, then I, my job is to talk to the doctors and the specialists and kind of see what's the hang up and what's keeping you in the hospital. Of course, you don't want to be in the hospital longer than you should anyway, because there's a lot of germs. So you might get something that you didn't start with. Mm, so every day I come in, I look at the census, I get a list of all the patients that are in the hospital every day. And then we go to what is called, um, it's a big meeting in a big conference room with all the nurses, uh, one nurse from each floor with every charge nurse. And then the medical director of the hospital is there as well, as uh, well as the director of case management. So there's a lot of bosses in the room and each patient I must present to my boss and the director of the hospital. And then the health plan usually calls in and they give a case manager from their side as well. And we all kind of have a huddle and we discuss the patient and we make sure we're all on the same page of why the patient's there, how long they've been there and kind of give our um, report of what we're doing to get them discharged in a timely manner. And then I, um, after that, I go see the patient I go talk to the family and I kind of get an idea of the family dynamic, where they live, who takes care of them, um, what are their barriers that's causing them to end up in the hospital, because some people come back a lot, we call them frequent flyers. Um, some people you see once a week, the same person. Um, maybe they don't have a caregiver, maybe they don't understand their medication, maybe they don't go to doctor's appointments, those kind of things. So my job is to find those um, situations and kind of try to find the answer, which is a lot of problem solving, because if they come next week, then the medical director says, hey, Anaya, what happened last week? So I have a lot of answering to do if you come back. So um, my job is really just to make sure that we figure out what are the barriers and keep you out of the hospital, at home, healthy and safe, and get you what you need, whether it be a walker, a wheelchair, a nurse at home, those kind of things. So it's a lot of responsibility. A lot of people don't think case managers are nurses, but it's a lot of it's a lot of nursing, a lot of problem solving, and a lot of pressure. A lot of people skills too. Yes, you have to be able to walk into a room of complete strangers every day. And you know, they're scared, their mom or their sister, their child, somebody is sick. So you have to take all that into a, you know, account that they might be angry, scared, nervous, and they have a lot of questions. Um, you don't want to give answers to the questions you don't know. That's very important because, you know, you might go, he's fine, he's fine, and he's not fine. That's not okay either. It's very important to build um, what's called rapport and trust. If you don't know something, it's good to say, I don't know that, but let me find somebody who does. Um, the training and education. 
Um, a lot of inpatient case managers are RNs. They have like a bachelor in science and nursing or an associate's um, in nursing. I've been lucky because I'm actually an LVN, which is um, kind of like a notch below an RN. But um, with all of my experience, I'm equal to without the degree of an RN. I've worked in a few hospitals and I've had a lot of experience on the health plan side and the hospital side. So fortunately, my resume looks pretty comparable to an RN. So I was able to get there. But um, most RNs are case managers, not LPNs. <laughs> And how many years is an RN a degree? Is it to get um, I believe you can go to like, you know, somewhere like nearby, like Irvine, they have a Stanbridge, which is like a school where you can just focus on your RN. Um, and I believe you can do that in about a year, year and a half. Um, and then I think after you finish the RN program, you just get your RN. And if you want your associates, then you do like another five months online. Um, and they also have like West Coast University, which is kind of a little bit faster than going through, a, you know, the college route is a little bit longer. So um, I think if you go through an actual like university or something, it might be about a two year or so program. Mm -hmm. um, so salary range for nurses um, for an RN case manager in California is about 90,000, um, which is equivalent to about $43 an hour which, you know, you're not, not going to be rich, but it's, it's good. Um, if you live in Orange County, it's a little expensive to live in Orange County. So you, it's a good thing. You could raise a family and live out in Orange County comfortably um, if you decided to be in case manager. It's a good career. I bet my suggestion is no one should be a nurse for the money because it's something that you need to do because you have passion, compassion for people. Um, why I like this job? Well, I like to help people. It's always been kind of a thing for me. I like to help people, I like to care, take care of people. I worry about people even when it's not my time to worry about people. So it's really good if you like to help people and you like different people. Um, you're always learning, especially in this career. Every day you learn something new. Uh, you don't walk in any days and it's the same thing as yesterday because you don't know what kind of patient you're going to get. You don't know what kind of family dynamics you're going to get or what the discharge plan. Sometimes they have to go to a different hospital that they need like an emergency surgery. So I have to plan how to get them there quickly. Um, job security. Anywhere I believe if you're a nurse or in the medical field, you're most likely going to be working, which is a great thing um, about healthcare. Um, problem solving. If you're really good at problem solving, it's definitely a good career for you because it makes you think outside the box. It's nothing is just a puzzle that just fits perfectly. Sometimes you have to pull little pieces and just kind of make it fit together for that certain case. Um, you get to meet a lot of different people, a lot of different patients from different places. Some people come to visit, they get sick, they land in the hospital. They may have come from like Korea or Egypt. I mean, and they definitely, you have to be aware that because you believe that doesn't mean they believe that. And, you know, you might say, just get blood transfusion, It'll, you'll get better. And the family says, no, no, no. And you have to be very respectful to their cultures and their beliefs. So you get to learn a lot about different people. Um, I love to help people and working with families and it always makes feel, me feel good when I go home and I know that the person that went home got what they needed. So it's very fulfilling for me. Um, cons, my top con would that be that unfortunately people die. You build the connection with them and you may come back, you know, the next day and they unfortunately passed away. And for me, that's I'm really weak when it comes to be even this long, I've been nursing and I still get sad. So, um, but um, you have to look at the quality versus the quantity. Sometimes people are so sick. It's, you know, they have peace. Um, long hours, you work a lot of hours. Sometimes, you know, you're supposed to take breaks, but those don't really happen because you have a lot to do in a short amount of time, but um, you end up staying and working until the job is done. And another con is sometimes you have difficult family dynamics. You might see six, a person that has six children and six people telling you that there's nothing you can do. None of them can help take care of mom and dad. And they want to tell you, you have to figure it out because they have families and they have lives and you have to accept that. And you have to take that as now this is your responsibility. So sometimes you really have 
really hard family dynamics, people yelling at you and you have to have a tough skin. Um, it's very high pressure, especially in my position because we're talking, it's a business. Even though it's medical care, it's a business. There's a lot of money and every day somebody stays in the hospital, it's thousands upon thousands of dollars. So if somebody's there because I didn't do something that could have been done and it's one more night in the hospital, I have to answer to a lot of people and they're not very nice when it's their money. So um, another con, you got to work holidays. <laughs> you rotate and when it's your Christmas or your Thanksgiving, nobody's going to switch with you. So you're there. Um, another con, of course, especially now, there's germs. So you don't know what you're going to get. So you have to use a lot of infection control, wash your hands, be mindful. You know, when you get home, wash your clothes, don't hug a bunch of people until you've kind of got some of the germs off of you. Um, and there's a lot of paperwork in my position. There's a lot of paperwork and a lot of people need paperwork and you need to make sure the right people get the right paperwork. And I don't like paperwork. <laughs> um, things I could do, um, things that you could do if you were interested and wanted to do, even just nursing, doesn't have to be case management. You could go to nursing school, get your master's in uh, science and nursing, uh, your bachelor's or your associates. Um, <clears throat> Of course, the more education you get, the you know, the more salary you get and the more opportunities. Uh, definitely good idea to volunteer maybe at hospitals or nursing homes, not only for your resume and stuff like that, but to actually make sure it's something you wanna do before you put the time and energy. You It might not be what you thought it was when you start seeing stuff that uh, goes on in the hospital and nursing home. And you could probably, I was thinking maybe you could contact uh, maybe a local college and university, or maybe one of the trade schools, if you were interested and talk to a counselor about how long it would take you, how much money it would cost, because there's lots of loans and grants and stuff that you can get. So don't ever let it be like a financial reason why you don't go to school. Um, <laughs> keep calm and call a case manager. Yeah, and um, if you get to the hospital, you'll realize if no one else can do it, they'll be like, we'll call the case manager. So we're kind of like the, I'm like, why are they asking me for the person has no car keys? What, what am I going to do about the person having no car keys? And they were like, well, you're the case manager. Well, I don't have their car keys. So it's one of those things where if no one else can answer, call the case manager. So you just have to say, okay, well, I don't know why this is my problem, but it is now. So we're going to figure it out. So it's very, I enjoy it. It's a good job. It's important. And if you have any questions, I'm here. Oh, there's a question. All right. What are some questions? Oh, we don't have the chat. So you guys have to be bold. Oh, we do have a chat. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, we do. It says I've already talked, but I forgot to say something so I can say it. <laughs> How long have you been working as a nurse? I've been a nurse for eight years, so um, it's definitely, I'm getting old. <laughs> Do you have any guide nurses? Oh, that's a good question. Actually, um, we do, but the, nurse, the guy to girl ratio with nurses in the hospital, it's getting more and more um, male nurses, but, you know, there's more girls. I would say there was maybe three nurses on three or four guy nurses on the whole hospital that I knew. Um, so it's very important as we need a lot of men to start becoming nurses. They are very strong and they, they look at things differently. So it's, it's good to have two views. My son's actually in nursing school. So I'm really excited that, um, you know, sometimes they go, Ooh, that's a girl job, but it's really not a girl job. It, anybody can be a nurse. You just have to have compassion for people. So that's a good question. How many nurses are in one hospital? Um, well, the hospital that I was at recently was um, in Whittier and there's three floors. So there's an ICU, there's a telemetry unit where they watch people's heart rhythms and they have machines and they have to watch those all the time. And then there's a medical surgical floor. That's when after somebody gets a surgery or if somebody comes in just with like maybe strep throat that they can't get rid of or something more non-life-threatening would be on like a medical surgical floor. Um, and I would say there's probably one nurse to every seven to eight people. 
So it depends on the size of the hospital, but there's nurses were probably in the hospital. It was kind of a smaller hospital. Good questions. Wait. Okay. Are you one of the people behind the front desk? Oh, wait, what did you say? Because our connection kind of went out. Oh, are you one of the people behind the front desk? Do you work no, behind? we actually have our own office. We have a case management office. So we're actually um, on uh, one of the floors, whether it be the med search floor, the telemetry. They also have case managers. Um, if you look it up on YouTube, you put in um, inpatient case manager, you'll see like a lot of people talking. I couldn't just pick one. But um, there's actually sometimes there's a case manager. They're just assigned to the emergency and need to be admitted because once they get admitted, it sometimes becomes tricky to get them discharged. So if you get a case manager kind of on the front lines and you go, this doesn't really make sense. Uh oh, you're kind of freezing a little bit. I think your connection is a little bit. <laughs> it was good, at least almost to the end. Oh, yeah. yeah. How about two more questions? <clears throat> can you see the chat thing? If anyone types it. Oh, they type it. Or they can unmute and say it. Okay. Anybody have any more questions? Maybe. <laughs> I guess my, my question is, I feel like nursing is so hard. Like I think being a case manager, at least you don't have to do all the lifting and patient care. Would you say you would prefer being a case manager to just being like a floor nurse? Well, I've been a floor nurse as well. So I've kind of experienced both. And like you said, it's very physically demanding part. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot. And then you, you know, they say in nursing, if you don't, if you didn't document it, it doesn't happen. So everything you do, you also have to write down that you did it. So, you know, if you turned a person to the left, you need to write down on a piece of paper that, you know, at 10 o'clock, you turn that person to the left. So the next nurse knows um, it's very important, everything that you do that you document, because if something comes out, God forbid something happens to that patient later, they, you know, you need to know what exactly happened. So I definitely think there's a lot of, there's a lot of pressure in both positions or just different kinds of pressure. Um, if you have a really good team, we work super close with our floor nurses. So sometimes I can go in a room and be like, you know, something doesn't seem right. Cause I saw him yesterday and he wasn't like that yesterday. And maybe this nurse hasn't been there for three days. And she's like, really? Well, how was he yesterday? you know so it's really just a good team of people and it's important that everybody kind of gets along and helps each other out if you have <clears throat> any conflict between team players it makes it very difficult so I mean we work with hospice groups come in we work with skilled nursing facility liaisons that come in there's so many different um people that we work with um, at different hospitals, everybody just, you know, I always say you get more with sugar than you do with salt. You really need to be nice to everyone mm -hmm. because that might be that person that, you know, in the middle of the night or something, you need to transfer that patient. And they might be like, hmm, remember that one time when you weren't very nice to me? <laughs> <laughs> so it's really important that you communicate and you're really good. I think, I think uh, floor nursing is definitely um, or physically demanding, whereas case management is very mentally demanding because your brain is really tired when you get home mm -hmm. from all the problem solving. I have, I actually have one more question. Um, okay, so I, I Han has all the questions. <laughs> I have a, uh, I got my, I, I got an echocardiogram done oh, yesterday sure. and mm -hmm. my uh, person who, that the medical technologist who was doing that was telling me that these technician jobs are great jobs. And she was telling me she makes $150,000. Mm -hmm. 
and she's actually been working for 20 years so I'm sure it's a lot of years oh okay would you agree that these technologist jobs are also good careers to look into and if so yeah because I mean and I know a lot of the are there particular yeah. ones that you're like these are good ones to check out or not really yeah definitely I think, um, and I think a lot of problem right now with like getting these jobs and going into these careers, hopefully you guys have a long time before you have to go into college and stuff like that, but um, is it's getting kind of what they call flooded, like everybody's like, ooh, let's make a lot of money, I'm going to go to nursing school, so a lot of the schools are getting really flooded and, you know, they'll say, well, you have to have these um, prerequisites or, you know, the technology school, my sister's trying to become an ultrasound technician and she's in Las Vegas and it's like a five-year wait list to like, you know, she has to take all these classes and then wait five years to hopefully get into the school for the technical part. Oh, wow. So those are kind of, I mean, that lady has been in there for 20, 20 years. Mm -hmm. You know, she probably has some sort of degree of some sort to make that kind of money. I, you know, it's a very, serious job if you're reading echocardiograms and you know it's you you're saying is this person okay to go home or is this person not so it's very serious you know I think sometimes people especially younger ones you just say oh I want to do that I'm going to make that much money but these are people's lives in your hands and um, like I said the stress and bringing it home to your family sometimes you got to think do I want to do that every day and they have something that's called nurse burnout and a lot of nurses, even though they're young, if they've already been doing, being a nurse since they started, they could be three, four years. I'm meeting nurses right now. I'm at CBS doing uh, vaccinations and like COVID testing. And um, the nurse has only been a nurse for like three years and she already doesn't want to be on the floor anymore because she's already burned out because they work so hard, so many patients. Um, so you have to really think, is that something that you're going to want to do long, long term? So that's where it's good that there's a lot of, there's a lot of office positions. You can work in a chemo infusion center. You can all do so many different things where you don't actually have to be on the floor. So if you think, well, I don't want to see people with blood and stuff like that. You don't have to, there's so many other jobs. So I would definitely say, look into it. If the world's going to need a lot of nurses, but you have to do your, you know, schoolwork. So be prepared. <laughs> Thank All right. you so much. That was awesome. Thank you guys. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you guys. I'll let uh, the high schoolers, you guys can go. You want to say thank you to Bella's mom? Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. And then the middle schoolers, you guys can hang here for now.